today by learning the tricks of a rather special trade, uh, that of two of America's most fabulous music makers. Now this couple, they are man and wife, started making records three years ago, and since then they have sold 15 million records. If you started playing their records, uh, after Omnibus of course, if you started and played them one right after another, you'd be lucky to come through in August 2020. You'd be lucky and you'd be mighty healthy. This is their music. <laughs> Now, if the sales figures are on the level, I think there's no question that two out of three of you at least know that this is the music of Les Paul and Mary Ford. Here they are. Mary? Thank you. Hello. Good to see you. Les? Thank you, Al. There is a widespread belief that they use this electronic machine that is about as simple as a, uh, a cyclotron. And we have a model here just to show you what this uh, popular conception is of their music. This, for instance, here, that cuts off the 600 ohm line. This is uh, frequency control here in this high and low pass filter. And uh, you have to have a tweeter and woofer speaker to hear it played back. And if you got a cinema futzer, of course, you can raise and lower each end and do anything you want with it. Well, let's see what comes out. Well, it's just about ready here. <coughs> What does the machine do to it? All right. Now, if you want to hear that back in five parts, set this here. Uh, as long as there isn't smoke. Now, <laughs> that should uh, do it. <laughs> You see, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, the final demolition of this uh, popular and ignorant rumor that the uh, basis of uh, Les Paul and Mary Ford's music is electronics. They make music the way people have made music since the world began. First of all, they are musicians. They have an accurate ear for harmony. They work very hard. They have a lot of patience, and they take advantage of the trick which, granted, electronics makes possible that you can record one part of a song and then you can play it back to yourself and then you can accompany that part and, uh, and keep on recording. That, I think, is the basis now quite seriously. They, they work, they have a setup which is nothing more than tape recorders in their own home and, in fact, they are uh, working day and night. We just grab them because they have their own television show but maybe they've got time to tell us how you really make your record. Starting at A and moving slowly on to B. Seriously. Seriously, right. on the level. Uh, we turn the tape machines on. They're just a standard, regular uh, Ampex tape machine. Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, we play the first part on the guitar. This right. is the rhythm part. Goes, uh, now you, you put your earphones on and you play another part to it. Is that that's right? That's right. Got it? I get the idea now of the background. That's the background. That's right? the background. You play this, all this to Mary, is that right? Or does she do it separately? Well, Mary will hear the part that's already made, and then she sings on to it. I first, see. First I'll we'll make the first part first. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. All set, Mary? Mm -hmm. Give me a G chord. All right. Somewhere there's music, how faint the tune. Somewhere there's heaven, how high the moon. Right. Now right. I'll add a tenor part to that. All right. Wait a minute. You're on. Okay. Somewhere there's music, how faint the tune. Somewhere there's heaven, how high the moon. What's the most tracks you've ever made? 
Well, the most that we've put out on the market uh, is 12 guitars and 12 of Mary singing. Does that mean 24 tracks? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> could you play that back to us and maybe put in a 25th? <laughs> Thank you. 